Good morning, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm out on my quest for England, or part of England. I'm doing something I've probably never done before. I'm standing on a roundabout at Tevil Gate. The place is so quiet, there's barely anything going on. I just thought <laughs> I'd stand in the roundabout. Um, we've got Morrisons over here, I live in Worthing, Oops, as you probably know. And you've got this main road and you normally can't ever do this. So whilst there's absolutely nothing at 7.30 in the morning on Easter Sunday, rummaging around, I thought I'd just go for my exercise, keeping my social distance, of course. But I'm going to go and take you to a blue plaque today. There's a lot of blue on this uh, fence here, which is hiding what is Tevil Gate. There used to be a, a toll gate here, which is where Tevil Gate gets its name. And in here in the 60s was this uh, monstrosity of shops, a sort of, I suppose, brutalist um, architecture of parade of shops. And then beyond, we had uh, the tax office. Uh, but before all of that, there was Victorian houses, and I've mentioned this in a previous video. We now have the new tax office that's going up behind me here, just through there. But this, if you go back far enough to the sort of beginnings of Worthing, um, this was a green area of grass, there was a pond, and a little further up this way, there was a windmill. Uh, and I, there is one image of it, I think, there may be others, but I've only ever seen one image of this area, which was Tevil Gate. And the Tevil Stream used to come into the pond and then would carry on behind me, past my house, and eventually would lead into Brooklands. And it's a video that I would love to make tracing the stream. Here we see, I think this is the uh, the girl who disappeared a couple of years ago and nobody knows quite where she ended up. It does seem to be a bit of a sad story. Anyway, the purpose of my walk today is to take you up to a house that for two years a very famous playwright and screenwriter lived. Uh, he was also an actor as well but I think most people know him as um, a playwright and that is Harold Pinter. He wrote the screenplay for a French lieutenant's woman. Now, I'm just deciding which way to go up. I think I'll go up this road. It's across here. Another very typical Victorian road with terraces either side. Christchurch Road it is, he says, quickly glancing at the signage to remind himself. And here we have a, a very lovely blossomed tree. I don't know what it is. It's got berries as well as pink leaves and these rather beautiful villas. So yes, um, he stayed in 1962 to 1964 in Worthing and I think he wrote The Homecoming whilst he was actually here, which has been um, a, a play that people have given much praise for. Um, now, my connection with Harold Pinter, I never met him, but I did do one of his plays. I performed one of his plays with a ch chap whose name now, I've been trying to think what his name was, but I can't remember. It was a two-hander. One of uh, Pinter's more famous plays was um, The Caretaker. It wasn't that that I did, but The Caretaker is an interesting play because people like to understand um, they try to philosophise about what it was about. It was, I think, uh, a three-hander with, um, uh, it's a long time since I've seen The Caretaker, but I think that the two men are, are, are brothers, and then the older man is a, is a tramp. And I remember reading in the, in the opening of one of the plays that I was doing, which I'll tell you about in a second, that uh, people said that the one of the brothers represented man, the other, uh, sorry, the one of the brothers represented God, the other one 
was supposedly representing um, hell and the devil and that the caretaker himself was supposedly man stuck between the two and Harold Pinter had said no it's the story of a bloke who goes to live in a house that's owned by these two brothers which I found quite interesting anyway the play I did that I have a connection with was called The Dumb Waiter it's about a it's a one act play I think and it's about an hour long a fascinating play Pinter was um, the master of the pause he loved to put pauses in for dramatic effect and sometimes you think he just played with the audience with this concept especially as he started to get known about it but his idea was that he had listened to people in the 50s when he was I suppose doing most of his work 50s early 60s and he heard that people very often never finished their sentences what would have been the end of the sentence was very clear uh, and and I think that's very true now a lot of people don't finish their sentences they also pause while they think of what they want to say and I think that's true and I think in uh, in the modern world everything is so slick but he he proved that life wasn't like that and so he he took a stylized version of real life the other thing that he would do is he would make people repeat themselves a lot which again is something that you don't really see in dialogue on the screen he would get people to say things like it's a bit of a wet day out there today isn't it it's a wet day that day it's been wet all day I've never seen a wet day like this I say it's a wet day isn't it you can sort of in the in the theatre in the theatre world you can sort of riff on a bit of pinter which I think is quite fun now I've walked down this road uh, so many times on the video this is Grefton Road and we should get close to Ambrose place which is where my destination is and we'll try and have a look at that we'll just go past Christchurch again this is a magnificent building I always think and of course it's a shame it's not really open for uh, Easter services for those that want that sort of thing I don't know too much about Grafton Place itself and the series of houses there I think they date from something like 1840s um, according to a bit of paper I looked at just before I came out but uh, here we are they are it is an unusual street in Worthing we've got these this is the end of Grafton at Ambrose Place rather quite wide buildings as you can see a number of little older terraces here possibly a corner shop on the end and here we go and we'll walk up here there's a couple of things apart from the blue plaque which we will go and have a look at any second it's very elegant it is a very elegant street here here on the left is where Harold Pinter wrote the homecoming he lived from 1930 to 2008 playwright actor and director lived here from 1962 to 1964 quite what it was about Worthing that he wanted in the 60s I'm not sure but uh, out of all the places I think it's probably the most grand that section there and possibly well no just that middle bit I think but the interesting thing the thing I like about this is you've got the road here and behind me you've got Christchurch lit up lovely blossom there but look on this side on this side of the road are the gardens they're individual gardens 
which they have to cross the road to access which is quite fascinating in itself very nicely looked after I have to say and then from the garden here there are the houses <laughs> isn't it odd I wonder if it was always thus that the, that the lane here I imagine it must have been now some of these gardens are uh, the parking spaces for cars, which I suppose makes sense. There's just so many cars. And I guess, oh my goodness, there's loads of cars down this one. One, two, three, four. Amazing, amazing property. And on a beautiful morning like it is today with the balcony, how nice to be able to sit there and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and start the day, read the newspaper, whatever it is people do. Well, there we are. That's my little gentle walk this morning. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe, become a patron, support what I do, give me a thumbs up, all the usual nonsense. And I will take you out somewhere else locally in Worthing next time. Till then, bye-bye, bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.